Okay, well, thank you for coming to the EXP Seniors Network Mastermind for June 8th, 2021. And tonight, we're just having an open discussion, but there are a few topics we're going to talk about. Debbie Gentry, the floor is yours. So Jody and I were talking about her market, which is Northeast Ohio. So in those three counties, how many listings do you think you have active in that area? The whole, every realtor together. I'm so, trying to yeah. Yes. So I would say um, in, in just my immediate area, as I said, uh, and, and that doesn't include, um, I mean, that, that's more than just, you're wanting MLS, not just my. Right, MLS. Right. There are probably about 500. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, there's, but that's, I mean, between, there's about 500 in the three counties, which is down, like I said, um, at, at least 14% from what it normally would be this time of year. So it's, it's incredible. A yeah. um, lot of buyers still looking. Um, we just, you know, it's, it's, it, it's a challenge, but we're working it. Um, I have a lot of people that want to put their house on the market and they want to move, but they will, they just, they have no place to go. Right. So Right. That, that's a challenge. So I've got a couple of relocations. I got a couple of, you know, elderly people who really want to just get out of town. And, um, but their plans of where they were going to go this year is not happening. And everybody's kind of, it seems that the people that I'm working with have put things off because of last year. And this year is just not being very favorable to them. Um, right. And, and they can't, you know, remodel even to accommodate their situation because uh, that's costing them a fortune or they can't find the wood or they can't find somebody who will do it or, you know, they need new windows, but it's 12, week wait, 12 weeks wait. So, right. right. Yeah. And so helping them kind of filter through those challenges is, <clears throat> is a trial for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So where are you at? Donald and I are both in the villages, Florida. So okay. an hour north of Orlando. Okay. And as of uh, about five minutes ago, uh, we have a total of 150 listings total. Oh, wow. Three counties in the villages, which we have 90,000 homes. Yeah. Uh, so we should, between uh, us and the developer, should have 1,000 listings that's how far down we are so yeah so who else wants to tell me how many do you have in your market listing wise we're trying to get a feel because people are asking what's happening in the rest of the world so tell us what's happening in your world Roderick Tom Isabel Dan anybody open your mic and share <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Roderick says he's a new agent. Welcome, Roderick. Not all at once. Go ahead, Tom. Show us your face, too. Sure. <laughs> sorry. There we go. There we go. No, sorry. I was just looking actually because our stats are a little different. We have um we can't keep up with demand, but inventory is actually up. So okay. more homes have sold. But we're just we're not able to still keep up with the um, with with the demand, right? So even though they sold, you know, like let's say three four thousand homes more than they did, you know, last May, um, it's still <laughs> there's there still uh, the demand is still uh, like not that hasn't been met, right? And so it's just remind us, yeah, remind us where you're at. We're in Toronto. Not Toronto. We're in Toronto. So, I mean, I guess we, we can't complain because um, we haven't had any new immigrants in 2020. <laughs> so now, because that was fueling a lot of the growth, um, it's always fueled a lot of the growth. But now they're saying that um, they're expecting to allow 400,000 immigrants into Canada next year. And so you'll probably have about 250 alone come to the greater Toronto area. So 
Wow. Um, there's growth and, you know. And new it, homes. <laughs> and you, well, there's new homes, but the province is also allowing for, um, you know, higher density, infill, things like that in, in, um, in any of the um, urban areas, right? Right. So what used to be considered, you know, two hours away, is now um, a bedroom community you know right so so there, there's potential like we're going farther and farther away from the city core to just you know you'll find listings you know there's tons of condos going up in Toronto so it's not too bad right um because the city's growing the demand is there we've gone through COVID with high unemployment and all the problems and people pe people are amazed they think there's gonna be a crash but if it would have crashed, it would have crashed already, <laughs> right? It's not going to crash when all the economic factors come back, like unemployment comes back and, and you know, like when that comes back, it's going to be booming, <laughs> right? Yeah, I think for the U.S., we may be in a different situation, but, you know, we'll see. I'm seeing 2005. That's all I see here. Um, so, but who else? Dan, what's happening in your world? But well, I was going to comment too. That the, oh. only, the only thing I see as a problem is if there's a, a, a world economic collapse. But like as far as the, the demand here, you know, there, there's the interest rates are low. Like unless, unless you know, things collapse throughout the world, I, I don't see it slowing down. I read an article about a week ago that said we're about 4 million homes short right now. With the boom of, you know, millennials wanting to buy now and everything else, it's, it, it's just incredible that we're, the housing shortage is that bad. Which, of course, will drive prices up, but, you know, it just depends on what's going on in each area, each community, each state, because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, right? I mean, what you just said, Tom, makes total sense. But will, like you said, will the world have a collapse? And we don't. Yeah, know. I mean, unless there's a threat of war from coming from Asia or something like that, that stock market stability, stock, stock market tank. tanks, um, yeah. But, uh, but, and here, plus they're, they're really pushing for garden suites, um, legal, legal basement apartments, because we all have basements here. So right. people are, all the new builds are putting in nine foot ceilings and, um, you know, the proper fire rated separation to allow for, I mean, I've heard of people actually, <laughs> if you can believe it, um, renting out basements and building a garden suite. These are, these, this is how the millennials are affording a house. So if you're going to carry seven, eight hundred thousand dollars, it's good if you actually live in a home that has two rental components from it, right? Yeah, it makes sense. So, cool. Dan, I think life expectancy is is higher, isn't it? Which yeah. makes the shortage of housing. Yeah. Well, it changes the housing market, right? Because, I mean, I, I know here, we have more assisted living memory care facilities than ever before. So older people, seniors are, are moving to go into those facilities. As an example, my neighbor across the street, she, her husband has dementia. So he's been in a facility for about three or four months now. And now she's decided to sell her home and move in to the facility as well into a separate unit uh, because she can't be with him. Um, so that's, that's a house that's either coming on or it's probably already sold. Um, but now you're taking up two residences in one facility, which is kind of, you know, yeah, it's costing them a small arm and a leg to do it compared to their, their home. 
but and you know they're fortunate enough that they can afford it but what do you do with a couple who can't afford doing that that's i mean that's some of the challenges that i think we're going to see moving forward is you have you know the class of you know poor middle upper class is the, the middle class is getting squeezed out to where you're either going to have the money or you're not from a senior perspective if you if you saved properly you plan properly for retirement you're going to be okay but these facilities are taking that money that you've saved and worked hard for for you know 40 maybe even 50 years they're taking that money pretty quick because <laughs> it's not cheap i mean you know you're five six seven thousand dollars a month in in some facilities and now in this case they got two places they got to be in for that kind of money so that's gonna unfortunately deplete their nest egg pretty quick so I think, you know, for the senior arena, I think those are some of the challenges we're going to see. And then, of course, we've, we've talked about it before in this mastermind is that you're going to have some new ways of creating housing for seniors, you know, where you go rent a room. And then there's a common living room and a common kitchen and somebody comes in and cooks for you. And that, that may not be, you know, maybe a four or five bedroom type facility versus, you know, 100, 200 bed facility. Um, hopefully isn't gonna cost as much, but I mean, I think you're gonna see a lot more of those popping up elsewhere to be able to accommodate all these people. Because as, as somebody mentioned, I think Jody, you mentioned we're, we're, we're living longer. And, you know, people, seniors in particular, continue to want to have their own space. They don't necessarily want to live with their children and grandchildren. They want to have their own life and their own space to some degree so that it can be normal for them. That would be their new normal. And I think, so we're going to, I think we're going to see a lot more of those popping up in, in areas um, that we don't, that we don't have that today. I just think it's, it's going to be a challenge as we continue to get more and more um, seniors. You know, we talked about in the last session we had we talked about the term boomers. Well, as, as I mentioned then, boomers are until 1964. You're born in 1965. You're now 55 years old. <laughs> so it's not just, and that's, you know, that's the challenge is it's not just the boomer generation anymore that's, that's retiring. It's the next generation and when does the next generation so you know before you know we might have three generations that are all seniors because we are living long so that i think that's that's going to be an interesting play as far as how housing is going to be looked upon here in the next five to ten years even so how are people getting seller leads? How are you generating seller leads? 55 plus neighborhoods or otherwise? How's anybody generating leads? Let's talk about it. Give people other ideas what they can do. Well, I'm a new agent, so I'm, I'm starting um, just with friends, right? Like through circle of friends, sphere of, sphere of influence, friends. Um, I, I tried running Facebook ads and stuff like that, and I, I don't mind doing it, but I think I want to get more proficient at just uh, being able to close a sale and with, you know, the, the, the being able to, you know, 
properly um how do i describe it i guess you know using scripts and and you know making the conversations flow properly and being able to determine you know um motivation and at what point they're at so like i'm i'm searching friends and stuff but i actually found um the presentation that ed robinson did because um he lives in toronto but he works in the east end of the city where i live so i found his approach to be very um you know like a logical approach you know <clears throat> like going to these probus meetings and certain seniors uh groups right or if you can get a captive audience and, you know, begin to, you know, show your face and become a regular, you know, some, some, somebody that they recognize, right. And go in every once in a while and chat at their meetings and their get togethers, because I think once things start to open up a little, we become more social that, you know, the, the reason why I like the seniors market is because I, I enjoy speaking to people one-on-one -on -one as opposed to through social media. Right. Yeah. Um, because it's funny, I'm taking that when I'm, I'm taking this Brian Buffini course, and um, I'm pairing up with a younger realtor who amazingly has a bunch of people on in her, you know, in her um, database, but she doesn't have any of their addresses. So she's got all these, you know, all these phone numbers to text and some emails, or barely even emails, it's just mainly texting. So I find it strange that, you know, she she because he recommends you pop by every once in a while and just say hello drop something off right but she goes i don't have any of their addresses right so so does so is a product like spokio or i don't know what you might have in canada can you uh, reverse engineer the addresses in her case could she find them that way via the phone numbers uh, I, no yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, no, you guys in the States, um, you have a lot more uh, liberal open laws where you can find out information on being Canada this more, it's a little more restrictive. That's what like I it's, thought. It's That's very thought. difficult to find um, addresses and, and, and other information just from a phone number or an email. Even on Facebook? Yeah. Well, on Facebook, if they put it down, right? most people hide that anymore you know yeah, yeah. that's true so like her her only option is she you know she's going to try and have some client um social gatherings right and then just try and slowly collect some addresses you know via via that way right well in in that case if i was talking to her have social ga gathering's and have price giveaways yeah you <laughs> well, that's her strategy the, the more yeah, often yeah. she can get them face to face the more comfortable they'll be with um giving an address because she's saying that people like under 30 they're not comfortable yeah but if you want to yeah if you want to register for this latest greatest whatever she's given away you know if she's going after the 30 crowd then some techie item uh you have to put your address there and a good phone number she probably can get it, but that's that's how I did it because I did the same mistake years ago, and yeah. I tagged you know kind of a kind of a teaching how to buy a house type seminars. So uh, Florida doesn't have any guidelines on that or rules against that, and Ohio doesn't either, but Michigan does. So does anywhere in your area, Tom? Do you have any rules about? about giveaways and stuff like in Michigan you can't do a drawing you can't you can't do any kind of drawing chance like that. it's gambling yeah chance yeah, yeah. Uh, so not, well, not that I'm aware of one person you have to give it to everybody otherwise it's gambling even if it's a drawing oh, okay mm -hmm. gotcha. yeah and, and that's the thing everybody has to yeah. know you guys don't have anything like that in Canada uh, no, not that I'm aware of. Like, I mean, there, there's other areas that are wide open because I'm working with a new buyer who is looking at uh, pre-construction. So she, uh, she, she sent me this link to a reputable builder um, to get in on the pre-construction meeting and prices and stuff. And it was all from an agent who was not affiliated with a builder. Right. So she it was it's very deceitful, especially because she was a new immigrant. So that stuff is wide open here. Right. Yeah. 
And he puts a disclaimer on the bottom of his his uh, website, so it's not like he's not admitting it. But people don't even she just she doesn't even get, get that far. They're just busy looking at the house and the area and what the different layouts are possible, right? So that's wide open, and that's when I I went back and I contacted her and I told her I said you weren't talking to the builder, you were talking to an agent, right? Who told her? And then when I talked to the builder, the release is actually in July. He was gathering all all names for june the 9th with a sense of urgency telling her that she wouldn't get a unit if she didn't register by the 9th of june <laughs> because he the, the 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 idea is he wants to get like two three four hundred names and sift through them all and present the builder with 50 qualified purchasers and even those 50 maybe i would i would find it hard to believe if if he got a lot of more than 10 units right because the builder wants to deal with one person not with with many right but luckily this is a reputable builder like that's wide open very deceitful there's no laws against that right like canada for years is like for our securities laws they were lax compared to the securities laws you had in the states for years and even to this day they're not as as stringent right but for privacy they go <laughs> they go in the eye like they're far more stringent here compared to uh, down there so is so, anybody doing seminars for, you know, how to sell your house or how to, what improvements to make to make your house sell faster, anything, anybody doing? Well, anything? again, I don't want to chime in all the time, but we, we are the most restrictive, one of the most restrictive jurisdictions in the world. So we, 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 we're still pretty much locked up. We're not opening up for another week or so. Yeah. so you open houses have been uh canceled for a while uh, we've had restaurants shut down for well over a year um so th this is all like when i talk to people in texas or even other parts of canada they're, they're a lot more open than we are here in ontario so we're gonna have to wait for all that but stuff that, right? but that would be a good thing to do via zoom you know so run a facebook ad you know introduce some people doing a seminar on X, whatever X is, and do a Zoom and get them started that way and then go to person or stay Zoom after you open up. Oh, I agree. But I'm finding that we're getting a lot of Zoom fatigue here. <laughs> yeah. People are tired of it. They're like, no, I don't want to do a Zoom. I'm like, <laughs> you know, unless they need to sell. And if they need to sell, they don't mind meeting you face to face. But like, People, as far as I'm, I'm getting a lot of pushback for Zoom, right? So, so what's everybody else doing to get seller leads? Right. Anybody? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Right works. That's all you can do right now. I mean, I, I think the key thing is is just keeping in front of people, continue to have conversations, so that when they are ready. Uh, somebody told me today that one of the things that they're doing is reaching out to people that they sold to three, four, five years ago, as they may be in the market to now sell. The other thing you want to do is you want to look at, um, you know, people, people who are flexible. Right, right now is the perfect time to sell. It, it's prices are high. Sell now. We're we're going to have a bust at some point. Who knows when? I don't have a crystal ball, but at some point we're going to have a bust. If if you got a nice profit sitting in your house right now, or condo, or what have you, I'd be selling. If I was on the edge of, do I want to sell or not sell? I'd be selling right now and go renting an apartment somewhere or renting another house. Wait until the bottom explodes and then go buy again. I have a buyer that uh, we're, we're looking at this house and it's $350,000 and which is an average price in the, in the area. It, it actually sold in 2018 for 250 and, and, and I told the buyer, I said, I know you love this house. I said, but 
I see absolutely no updates that were done to this house. It had a septic, it had, you know, all the component things done within the last five years, but they were done prior to the last sale. So that is exactly what those people are doing. They're looking at this market and going, if we can get $100,000 more out of our house, we're selling. And by the way, they don't have to pay any tax on it. No capital gains because they lived there for two years. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, it's incredible. So these people are, you know, that, and that's what I tell them. If you are planning to sell your home and that's what, and that's been my message to past clients, like you said, reaching out to those people that are past clients. I have said, if you are planning on selling within the next three to five years, you should be thinking about doing it now and finding an interim place. Whatever, you don't have to buy whatever your five-year plan was, but you should be thinking about putting whatever it is you're living in on the market now, yep. because you will never get that much money back five years from now. It just is not going to be able to sustain that long. Right. So that's a great market as far as finding those connections. Um, I, I have absolutely nothing that is tried and true. It, I feel like it is a, is it, it's a floundering. It's been a year and a half of, it's new, new ways, new, new criteria, new, uh, everything's new and you take it, okay, we're going to go this direction today. And, and that might work long term, but there just doesn't seem to be any any consistency for me. And I that's what I was hoping that you guys would be sharing, going, oh yeah, this has been working for me. <laughs> well, I don't know that anybody has a real answer. No. I mean, everybody, I mean, even I mean, everywhere you go, at least here in the States, there's there's not enough houses on the market for people to want to buy. Like I said earlier, 4 million homes short. That's a lot of homes. That's a lot. But uh, just a question for you, because I mean, we, we live near um, Buffalo, New York. Um, and even though Buffalo is doing pretty good, uh, it, the Northeast is not as, as vibrant as the South and the Southwest in terms of growth. So right. is it just a matter of, not enough houses in, in the locations where people want to move to. Because it's the same thing in Canada. We can say there's plenty of housing in Nova Scotia, but or Newfoundland, there's tons of stuff out there, but nobody wants to go there. <laughs> so what's, what's happening here in the States is the Northeast is moving to the Southeast and, yeah. and to Texas in some cases. The West Coast, California, Washington State, and Oregon, are moving to Nevada, Arizona, Arizona, and Texas. And now we're starting to see it here in Florida. Um, people are moving here for many different reasons. Northeast and California, and actually the West Coast, are moving to Florida or to the Southeast simply because of the taxes. Yeah. And their pensions in Florida won't be taxed. Yes. So they automatically get a pay raise when that happens. But Florida's always traditionally had growth. They've had a little boom and bust, but there's but, always been growth. But not like, not like not it is like now. It. We're getting a thousand people a day moving here. Wow. And the people out there aren't leaving. And the people, and you know, everybody thinks of Florida is is seniors. That's not the case anymore. That stopped being the case about twenty years ago you're still going to have your pockets but a lot of the younger people have moved down with their families to be close to mom and dad and their grandparents so they've moved and so you take manhattan as an example they're they're hurting bad in new york city right now um so they're not having a there they have more houses and condos and things on the market there than they've had in a long time and that's because everybody's deciding to move. They're tired of the politics. They're tired of the craziness that's going on in these states. And they're moving elsewhere. Same thing on the West Coast. 
yeah. taxes are extremely high, cost of living is extremely high, the politics that's involved is not what everybody wants. So they're moving to a state where they feel more comfortable with the politics. But Florida's, but Florida's a, a pretty good size now. There are over 20 million people. So it's not like it's it's a fair size, yeah. you know, place. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not just tourism, right? It's beyond tourism. Yeah, and um, you have pockets, right? Yeah. So you have the Southeast Corridor, you know, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Palm Beach. Yeah. Then you have the Southwest Corridor, Fort Myers, Naples area. Then you've got Tampa. You've got, you know, little pockets. areas. You've got you know, Orlando, Jacksonville. you got yeah. the Panhandle. Yeah. You know, so you got, but you've got a lot of vacant land in between. Oh, yeah. But well, didn't they say in California, first time in 100 years, there's been a, uh, um, the population has contracted for the first time in 100 years. They've had 100 years of growth, and this is the first year in 2020 that it actually shrunk. But well, I mean, um, that, yeah, that comes back to people are wanting to find a way to make their money grow. And yeah. one of the ways to do it is to lower their expenses. Right. And that's, oh, and that's why Arizona has been a boom. Like people right. in California have really benefited from whoever's gone to Arizona. Right. Exactly. So, you know, I think that's in general what everybody's tried to do over the last year and a half is to make their money grow in whatever yeah. way they can. Yeah. Uh, people aren't taking trips and cruises. So now they're improving their house. Well, because yeah. the demand on improving their house, now we can charge more for the lumber that you need and yeah. we can charge more for the service also. But, you know, it, there's just always a trade-off when you make a demand on one side, something else is going to have to go up. So one thing that Jody was saying, I hope, you know, I was hoping you guys all have, uh, you know, the answer. There's one <laughs> common thing that occurs everywhere doesn't matter where you live you're always going to have deaths now as morbid as that sounds i work the probate market heavily um and it's not for everybody um, because it is a tedious long detailed emotional process in a lot of ways but that's one way to get listings. Now, you know, some you people you work the probate market. How do you do that? So we had a get together down in Tampa and I ran into a couple of ladies there and I said, you have to get to your county or in Canada, Toronto and figure out how in the States and sorry, Tom, I don't know Canada well enough, but in the States, if you have your house at a trust and you're married and one dies, they still have to go to court for 30 days in the state of Florida to say, okay, the surviving spouse gets the house. So that may not be the best one to go after because the surviving spouse may not be leaving, but it's a potential because of the emotion, just like Donald said, the lady's husband's in a nursing home memory care and she can't live without him. That's going to happen. So you have to follow up and see. But I go after the ones that don't have a surviving spouse. And I go after them via our county makes it very easy. <laughs> um, so I could track that the minute that it gets recorded as, you know, it's going into probate, whatever that may mean. That may mean three, three days. It may mean three years depending on how complicated it is. But I start contacting the family and they give you the names right there. They give you the survivors and the obituaries. Our obituaries are online now, so it makes it easy. Um, I use, like I said, Tom, that it's easy to track them backwards. I used to pay for the service. There's actually services out there that do all the work for you. But I decided I didn't want to pay the service. So if if your place doesn't provide the service easily that you can get hold of it, I'll give you the name of, you know, two that I know of that does it. So, yeah, well, I, I know up here, you, you, I don't think we have something 
similar to that because you you can uh, if if a spouse if one of the the if spouse dies you don't necessarily need to take their name off the title until they sell the house. So there's no law saying like I know for example I'm helping a lady in the neighborhood whose mother she just took her her mother's name off a title and her mother died in 2009. Ooh. Right? Well, so and that, that's true here um, to a certain extent, because we run into that, that, uh, you know, somebody will call me and say, my dad died last week and mom's still on the deed. Where's mom? Yeah. Oh, she died six years ago. The one I just listed and sold two weeks ago was that exact situation. She, the mom died six years ago. They had two different trusts and they didn't bother to take care of mom. Uh, so yeah. and now we had to, you know, go to court and try to, you know, figure it out of how to resolve that issue. But, you know, death is one thing that's always going to occur. But like I said, you have to figure out, is there an easy way to get hold of it? Do you use the service or do you even yeah. want to do that? Well, um, but here, like, I don't know how the laws are there, but here, for example, like a lot of people, you don't, not that you don't have to worry, but the um, estate taxes are, are not really that high, usually about 1.5%. So a lot of people that think they have to take the name out, their name off of it and give it to their kids, that's actually detrimental because if you give your house to your kids here too early, because it's not their principal residence, they could be subjected to capital gains tax for the amount of years that they own it, which would be probably higher than the one and a half percent that you would pay as a, as a, an estate tax. So yeah. here, like you, you, you don't have to take the name off a title until the house is sold. Even if yeah. one of the persons is no longer living, then the lawyer does that once it changes owners. Right. Yeah, and every area is going to be different of how they operate. Yeah. But think about that as a possibility because that's the one thing that, like I told Donald, I said, I've got to get back to the basics. And the basics yeah. to me is hitting that hard because there's very few realtors that would do what's required for probate in my market. Well, um, that's what Ed, what Ed Robinson was saying. Like up here, what he does is he accesses some property records. And he looks for anybody who's been in the house before a certain date. Right. So figuring if somebody's been in the house for 25 to 35 years, they're seniors. And then he basically sends a correspondence to them directly. Right. And, As opposed yeah. to farming an area, he, he picks off specific houses um, where the owners have been there. Because again, a lot of people like my mother's been in the house 49 years. Right. Yeah. So and that check property records. You would see that. Yeah, and that's a good way to do it is anybody yeah. over, you know, 15, that's what I'm copying, <laughs> right? And we'll work in the same over, area. Yeah, 15, 20 years because empty nesters is going to happen. They yeah. may need to downsize or they may yeah. need to move on to someplace else. Yeah. But there's always ways to do it. And I think that's the thing that we're going to have to think outside the box to get the listings because it's back to list to last. Yes. So there has been in our area, there's been a lot of um, new retirement facilities going up. And that's a great opportunity if you have those in your area, introduce yourself. You guys mentioned earlier about you know doing meetings and stuff. Um, one of the things that they actually encourage is to have someone come in and talk about you know, the transition into a facility and leaving your home and that independence that you think you're losing, but yet you're actually gaining independence by moving into those. Um, so a couple of the facilities in our area actually sought out realtors to come in and do those talks, which allows you to meet people. And it's not for the people moving into the facility, it's for the family members. Um, and how, you know, how it affects them putting mom and dad in the, in these places um, and, and how it makes them feel and, and that building that relationship with those family members might be a way in your areas. I don't know. I, I, I know Roderick, you were saying that you're, you know, you're new um, and Tom, I think that might be something if you have those facilities stopping in one day, 
saying hi, introduce yourself, leave a card and just, you know, tell them who you are. And if they ever have anybody asking about real estate questions, you're happy to answer it and be a resource. Great way to make a connection anyway. And it's also the same thing on new home builds. You need to know every new home builder in your area. And I call it wine and dine them by taking donuts, taking water, taking lunch, taking whatever, and being their best friend because there's a lot of buyers that walk in there that don't have a realtor to sell their current house. Mm -hmm. And new builds is going to be the way that most people are going to end up going because that's what's going to be available. And so if you go after the new home builders and wine and dine them just as much as you do the nursing home assisted living types, um, in our market, we've got kind of a locked situation because of the developer, but, you know, it's this thing that it works well. That's what I did in Orlando. I, I had 25 new homes on the market uh, on my books waiting to close. And a lot of times I'd get called and say, hey, this couple's got a house to sell. Go talk to them. Um, just because I gave them enough business and wine and dined them. So another way to get some listings. Back, back doors way of getting it. <laughs> hey, Tom, you, you said... You've mentioned a few places, so I'm confused. Are you in Ontario? In Toronto, yeah. Oh, you're in Toronto, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So how far is that from Brownburg, Chatham, Quebec? Oh, um, <laughs> depends how far that is from Montreal, but we're about... We're about um, Outside of your hours. area? Yeah, four and a half hours from to Montreal. Okay. So that's in the Eastern Township. It's probably about five or six hours. Okay. Outside of your area then. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have, a, um, I have a, a friend who has a father who is, of course, elderly because we're old, um, but his dad has some land that he's been sitting on all these years and and he's thinking he needs to get his dad to sell that property. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a that's a popular recreational area. There's lakes it? and stuff. It's near the uh, border with Vermont. Vermont, okay. New Hampshire border, right? I think it is. And upstate New York um, is attached to Quebec too. So that's the type of uh, geography you're looking at there. It's kind of okay. like gentle rolling hills, some lakes, very picturesque. Um, small towns, you know, it's the weekend getaway for Montreal. One of the now's a great time for him to unload that vacant land then, because the kids don't want it. And, and oh yeah, yeah, because Dad... recreational properties are selling, you know, very good. Okay. But I was going to say, there's there's a company up here that I've heard some ads, and I've just started looking into them called Properly Real Estate where they kind of help you and they, they don't, they don't market specifically to seniors, but they, they're talking to, to a lot of seniors for the downsizing part where they come in and they basically evaluate your house and allow you to look for another house. Right. And then make a major down payment with the equity in your house. And once you're moved in to the new house, then they help you with the sale. Right. And they, they say things like they're not a wholesaler because they they tell you that part of the package is that they stage your house once it's empty and that they will get you top dollar, right? So it kind of allows people on both ends. People that are going up, they say, fine, that, you know, this is what you have. Like you have $800,000. If you want to move up to a million, then you need to be approved, right? Obviously. And then they help you find that house. So they make the sale first, move you out of the house. And then, and then they guarantee you a certain price for your house. So it's not like a wholesaler, right? But you're already moved out. And it's the same thing they're telling with seniors, right? So they're saying, fine, we'll find you a house first. Like say your house is worth a million. The house you look for is going to be, let's say 700,000. And they move you into that house. Then they sell your house, right? And they evaluate the house that you're in and guarantee you a certain price. So, but the whole idea being that they will move you into whatever house you're looking for first, 
And then once you're out, they'll take care of cleaning your house and staging it and selling it for top dollar. Because we're seeing a lot of a lot of stuff, a lot of, of companies up here, like you know, the typical cash. You know, we'll buy your house for cash 24 hours, we'll give you a quote, which is basically they give you peanuts, right? So there are people that go for it surprisingly, but you know, like anybody who does the math is, you know, a little bit of effort could net you another hundred thousand easy, right? But that's a lot of money for convenience, <laughs> right? Right. Well, so and that's what I don't understand how the how those companies are convincing people because you know how long does it take to sell a house in any market? Yeah. You, well, I I, have, I don't haven't had it, but you know what? Some of them do. They they show people these pictures of houses that look terrible, and sometimes houses they go to look terrible, and they tell them, say, look, you know, do you want to make do you want to fix it up? Do you want to spend the money? Do you want to have people come to your house? We can take turn? care of this all. Yeah, you know, and yeah. We'll have you out in, in a month, right? So, but at least, the, but the wholesalers, they don't help you find a house. They just give you rock bottom, you know, prices for your house. They don't, they, they leave it up to you to find your own place to go. Right. That, I, I just, that blows my mind. I just want you to know. Oh yeah, me too. But uh, there are all sorts of weird things going on right now, and, and that one again, that one is another one that I had not heard before. And I mean, I, I, it's great. Let's you know, find you a house and worry about selling yours later, and we'll take care of that. We'll handle that for you. <laughs> and let's you know, financially, how's that work? <laughs> well, I think it works in a hot market. Um, but if, if the market is not like this, this will work in the market, in the market that we have presently, because the house is real sell. estate office actually funding it. No, this is a realtor. They're actually a registered with the uh, Toronto real estate board. They're a realtor. Right? Well, that's what There's I mean. Just... So they're funding the purchase almost like a bridge loan. Yeah. 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 Huh. So they're saying, well, they're saying no, well, the, they're going to help you pull the equity out. Right. So they're helping you with the financial vehicle that will allow you to pull the equity out of your house in order to make the purchase. Like a reverse mortgage type thing? Well, no, well then then when you sell your house, it gets paid off, right? Right. Or it gets the portion that they guarantee you gets delivered to you, right? But Crazy. um well, it's the same thing, I guess, is if, if, if you were to go purchase a house, you would do the same thing on your own, but you would have to, uh, they're saying we'll guarantee you a price, right? If you do it on your own, you buy a house, then you're obligated. So it's always the same thing. Do you buy a house first? Do you sell your house first? So. Yeah, we've been doing, I've, I've been writing a lot of con, uh, con, con, a concurrent offers, um, which is good for the seller, not so good for my buyers, but it, 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 it has a little bit more power than a contingent offer. So we like those. Well, we haven't seen, I would say, I mean, I, I've only been a realtor a couple of years, but it's probably been longer. We, you, there is no realtor in Toronto that would probably say that you, they won't put a clause in saying uh, I'll purchase your house on the condition of selling mine. Like that's, that's a no sellers will turn that down in an instant. Right. Well, but, in this market. but if you don't go that far outside of Toronto there, that's still quite standard, right? Yeah. Like it's well, some of these small towns, two hours away, it's, it's pretty standard. Well, and, and with the concurrent, not contingent, but with a concurrent offer, it, it leaves the seller's house in active status on the market and allows them to bring in other offers. But then what happens is, then yeah, they have and then 24 hours a risk, yeah, to, yeah. to match the offer. 24 but, hours to remove that, and yeah, that's what you're seeing in the outlying areas. But in Toronto, yeah. you are not seeing anything that says, "Oh, yeah. um, you know, condition upon selling my house." We haven't seen that for years. Wow! Because everybody will be like, "No, you that's that's no. your affair, <laughs> right? <laughs> you want the house? We want to that you want to firm up, right? Like they they'll still allow for like conditions like financing and things like that, but condition and upon the sale of the house. Force them, I think, it forces them to write an offer 
that, yeah, we're, we're going to buy this, but if I don't sell my house, my financing isn't going to get approved. And that's just, that's just crazy. And that's why we, I think in our area, why we're seeing homes go back on the market. Oh, definitely. Like I'm thinking because well, a lot of realtors are advising their clients not to put any conditions, right? right? Even inspection. But like what I'm seeing starting to see is, is um, like there's an app here called House Sigma, which is actually a realtor too. But you're starting to see on there, they, they run the, um, one of their categories is sold under bot. So you'd be amazed at how many houses I used to see that were sold in 2017 or purchased in 2017 and sold less for less than they bought in 2017. But now I'm starting to see a lot of houses that were purchased in 2020 and being sold a year later for less than they bought. So that tells you that they couldn't afford it. Something's up. And then they ended up selling the house for less than they purchased it, even just six months to a year earlier. Right. So you're seeing a lot of that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think, I I think that's a form of buyer's remorse. So people are saying I overpaid. Uh, I'm not going to see this price for several years. So, I'll take my losses now. Well, and I think it also comes down to people figured out in 2020, the house that they thought they loved, they don't love so much now that they're working from the home, the kids are at home, the whatever's at home. And the house became very small compared to what they wanted it to be. We're also having people that are moving from here back to wherever their kids are at grandkids are at because the parents have to go back to work but the kids were at home you know doing virtual school or whatever you call it wherever and so it it's a thing that a lot of movement is happening that wouldn't have normally happened without COVID. I agree and I think a lot of people are moving mom and dad in with them and and that's some of the, you know, after effect of, of all of this, which spaces the issue. I'm, I'm hearing more and more, and I don't know if that's true in all areas, but here I'm, I'm seeing more and more where mom lives with them or dad lives with them and, instead of someplace else. Well, I want to honor everybody's time. We've got about three minutes left. Anybody have a last topic that they would like to discuss? I saw your your post that TikTok's next week. That's pretty cool. Yeah, TikTok's for seniors next week. So does that mean that it's for seniors for us? I'm not not (laughs) dancing no TikTok stuff. So just putting it out up front. But Debbie might, you never know. Now, um, it's 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 a it's a realtor at EXP that specializes on TikTok, but he's gonna, I think he's gonna try to put a, a senior's twist to it. So it's it's an interesting platform. There's some really good stuff. There's lots of dancing that goes on. Uh, I look at the interesting stuff. There's a lot of good, there, there are some really good people that put some really good information out there, just like any other social media platform. It's just, you know, you got to pick and choose like anything else as to what you want to look at, and what you don't, but there are some really good people out there that are doing uh, real estate related stuff on TikTok. So just a topic we thought we'd, we'd throw out there and let everybody have some fun with it. And hopefully he'll bring some fun um, to the mastermind next week. But, Is that the cowboy? No, um, I forget his name now, but no, it's yeah, not the he's with his guy. daughter. It's Sean Cochran, I think. Sean Cochran, it's not yeah. Sean Cochran. Yeah, that's the one. That is the one. Sean Cochran is. Oh, yeah. I've seen his stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sean Cochran. Yeah. So hopefully we can get a little senior flavor to it and uh, have some fun with it next week. Yeah, his daughter helps him out with the videos and stuff. Yeah, I've, I've seen him. He's good. 
Well, good. Thank that's you what, for that's what everybody doing. coming. <laughs> hey, Carleen, where are you from? What it, What is your area? Oh, Chicago. Okay. Yeah, I'm in the city. So are you seeing more people move out or move in or steady, Carleen? Well, Chicago is somewhat neutral in the sense that, yeah, there's a lot of migration out to like the um, further, how would I say, to the, towards Missouri, like, and all that stuff. Yeah, they are to, to those areas. But there's always been a lot of migration out of Chicago for the last two, three years. I don't know because of what the city's going through or the state with the taxes and all that stuff. Yep, yep, that's exactly what we were talking about with California and the Northeast and Illinois the same way. Taxes have gotten out of control and people's looking for a way to, I call it, uh, get a bigger paycheck. And that's with lower taxes or lower housing costs or whatever it is. So. Yeah, I agree. And then the energy too. Little smaller places are better now than city life for now. I think people can see that. <laughs> yep. All right, everybody, it's 801 Eastern Time. Thank you very much for coming again. And we will see you next week. TikToks for seniors. TikTok for seniors. Thanks. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>